Welcome to Where He Leads Me with Mike and Laura Harris. Where He Leads Me will help to bring understanding of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Join Mike and Laura as they discuss biblical truths to help people walk in their God-given purpose and calling. Welcome back to Where He Leads Me. I'm Mike Harris. And I'm Laura Harris. We're very happy to be with you today. And Laura, tell our listeners what we'll be talking about. Well, Mike, today we are going to be talking about the authority of the believer. And it's really been on my heart to make sure that people know what they carry within them and the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the afflictions of the enemy. We need to understand that we have authority, and we need to understand where that authority comes from. Well, absolutely, and we also need to understand it's the authority of Jesus. He lets us use it, but it overcomes the power of the enemy. Maybe that's a great place to start in understanding the difference between power and authority. Well, Laura, what's the difference between power and authority? Well, Mike, power is often equated with just brute strength, just muscle and the ability to just bulldoze through a situation, whereas authority is the governance to back up the power. We have a couple of examples, so would you like to share one of the examples that we have of the difference between power and authority? Well, Laura, in the NFL football, you have the referee who has the authority to enforce the rules of the game. And normally that person is probably one of the smallest people on the field, if not the smallest, compared to these big bruising linebackers and linemen and football players that are out there. But guess what? The referee can tell them what's going to happen because the referee has the authority and the backing of the powers that be to enforce that authority against the teams. The players probably have more brute strength than the referees, but the referees have the backing of the organization. So if the referee tells a player, you're expelled from the game, you have to go, even though the player could in brute strength just say, no, I'm not going, I'm staying here, they know that the authority of the referee is such that if they don't do what the authority says, then they're going to be in a greater problem in the long run. Well, Laura, and as we're going to see as believers, we have to understand the authority we walk in and where it comes from, as I said a minute ago. Well, exactly, Mike. And another example is, you know, a police officer has both power and authority because they have the backing of the government to back up what they do if it's within the bounds of the authority they've been granted. Whereas someone who's engaging in criminal activity may have power, but they have no authority. We see that there is a difference between power and authority. But in Christ Jesus, when we are walking in the authority of Jesus Christ, we have the authority to overcome the power of the enemy. Laura, there's a familiar story in the Bible that demonstrates this idea about authority. And it's the scripture about the centurion. And you find it in Matthew 8, verses 5 to 13. And I'll read that now, then we'll talk about it. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel." 
And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. When we see the word for authority in that passage, it means delegated influence, force, privilege, mastery over. As this centurion is talking to Jesus, he's saying, I am a man under authority. I recognize your authority, and all you have to do is say the word, and based on the authority that you carry, I know that my servant will be healed. We see that this centurion was a man under authority. He had men under his authority, so he recognized the power of authority. And he told Jesus, all you have to do is say the word, and because of the authority that you possess in the kingdom of God, my servant will be healed. There are so many great lessons that we need to understand out of this passage about authority. Well, that's true, Laura, and he does explain about authority, and I think most of our listeners understand what authority means, but yet we need to stop and think about what it means in our Christian walk the authority that we have. And here he's talking about the men under him. If he says go, they go. If he says come, they come. And they do what he asks them to do because of that authority. And as Christians, as believers, we're under the authority of Jesus Christ. And we utilize his authority, much like talking about the police officers. They have that authority But the one that backs them up is the judge who can take action against the wrongdoers to back up what the police officer says. Jesus is the authority behind us that backs up what we say and do if it's in keeping with his kingdom wishes. Mike, one of the things that you said was the centurion asked his soldiers to do this or come here and do that. But... When we read Matthew 8, 9, it says, For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. It's not a request. This centurion recognizes the power he says to speak it and to expect that it will be done. I really believe that the most important verse in this passage is in Matthew 8, 13. And Jesus said, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So what did he believe that caused him to be able to receive what he was seeking from Jesus? Well, he believed that Jesus had the authority and ability to heal his servant and that he could do it. And because the centurion believed, his servant was healed. And going back to what you said about in the scripture here, it says that he recognized he was under authority. I'm assuming that this centurion was under the authority of the king. So just like the judge and the police officer here The centurion recognized he was under the authority of the king, yet he had people that were under his authority. But the king backs up his authority, and for us, the king of kings backs up our authority. Mike, that is so good. And Jesus actually said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. This man was not a Jew. He was a Roman soldier. He was a pagan. He didn't follow the Jewish laws or the Jewish religious understanding. He just knew authority, and his authority equated to great faith. I think this is what we need to take away from this, is that as we understand who Jesus is, 
and we understand who we are in Jesus, that Jesus is going to back up what he has said about himself and what we know about him when we believe in faith and we trust in the authority of Jesus. Well, Laura, I would say this, too. Neither you nor I nor any of our listeners have ever healed anyone. That's true, Michael. We do not heal. We don't have the power to heal. But we believe and know the one, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, who can heal through us. And Scripture clearly says that he has given that power and authority to us to utilize his power and authority to do the things that we could never do. And he said in Scripture, greater things than I've done you will do in my name. And he said that authority is available to us when we believe through Christ Jesus. How powerful is that authority? Amen, amen, amen. And when we talk about this centurion being under authority, that's where we are. We are under authority, but there are things that are under our authority. And I've heard it said, and I believe it to be true, that a person who is not under authority will never have authority. And so this centurion recognized, one, he's under authority, but he also has authority. That's where we are. We are under the authority of Jesus Christ, but we have the authority to speak in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Mike, not in the name of Laura, not in the name of anyone else, but we have the authority to speak in the name of Jesus and to see these things brought forth. I want the listeners to know and grasp the fact that the power and the authority of Jesus is available and we can apprehend it by our words and we can speak into situations. We can tell demons of illness and disease and destruction to go because we speak in the authority of Jesus Christ. And we see throughout Scripture that Jesus healed He raised people from the dead. He put the ear back on that was cut off by one of the disciples. So we see it throughout Scripture, and that same power and authority is available through us to heal today and to bring forth miracles. We don't do them. Jesus does them through us or through our listeners if we believe and have that belief sincerely in our heart. We have to really get it. It's one thing to say the words and have it in your mind. It's another to have it really deep in your heart that you know that you know that if Jesus wants to heal me, he can do it because he has the power and authority to do it. Well, Mike, when you really look at what the centurion said in Matthew 8, 8, he said, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. So how did God create the heavens and the earth? He spoke it into existence. The spoken word of God is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. Things are brought forth and exchanged when there is a spoken word. And so the centurion is not begging Jesus to heal. He's saying, just speak the word in the authority that you have, and my servant will be healed. Let's get that in our heads. Let's get that in our hearts. We say, Jesus, speak the word in the authority that you have, and things will happen in the natural realm. He also tells us to speak the word. He tells us to use our voices in the authority of Jesus Christ, and things happen. We have to understand the power and authority that we walk in as believers. And so often when I hear people praying, I'm not saying there are any bad prayers, but so often I hear people begging God to do something that he already died to give us. And we don't have to beg God to do what he has already died to give us. He died to give us peace. He died to give us health, wholeness, wellness in every area of life. We have to recognize what he has already died to give us 
and know what he wants us to have and then come into agreement with it. Well, the centurion realized that Jesus did not have to be there to lay on hands. He just had to speak the word and it would be done. And I believe that's why Jesus said, greater faith than this I have not seen even in Israel, because the centurion had the understanding of Jesus' authority and that he could just speak the word. And I believe that the centurion could understand that authority better than some others because of his own life experiences with the authority he was under and that he could exercise over those that were below him. Amen. Well, are we see in Scripture that Jesus gave power and authority to the disciples? Because in Luke 9, verse 1, it says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So we see right there, Laura, that he gave them power and authority over what? All demons. And as we often say, all means all. So there's not a demon on planet Earth that's not subject to the authority of Jesus through us for God's kingdom and his purposes and his glory. Well, that's right, Mike. And he said to cure diseases... He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So he is giving the authority, his authority to the believers, to the disciples to go do these works of the kingdom. We know that when demons are cast out, when illnesses are cured, when people are healed, that the kingdom of God has come near. Because we know there are no demons in power in God's kingdom. We know that there are no sicknesses that are allowed to remain in God's kingdom. We know that there are no diseases in God's kingdom. And so he is telling us in this passage, Luke 9, 1 and 2, to take the authority and the power that he is giving And to exercise that over demons and to cure diseases and to heal sicknesses. And it says that he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And when you heal the sick, what is that? That's a miracle. And what we see is when the disciples went out and preached the kingdom and performed miracles... People could see and they could believe and people came to a salvation experience with Jesus because of the miracles they'd seen and the kingdom of God that had been preached to them. It's like if you go and preach the kingdom and then demonstrate it, the power of Jesus and his authority through miracles, signs and wonders, people will believe and they will come to know the salvation of Jesus Christ. We also see a very similar passage in Luke chapter 9. He sent out 12, but in Luke chapter 10, he sent out 70. So almost the same commission that we see in Luke chapter 9. But why don't we look at that and see what happens when they came back? Well, Laura, we see that in Luke 10, starting at verse 17, where it says... Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven." What a wonderful, wonderful promise this is that he says you have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. What does all mean? All All means means all, all, right? (laughs) And so we have the authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I love this because... In Luke 10, 20, 
Jesus is redirecting the disciples to not be too excited that they are walking in authority, that they are exercising authority over serpents and scorpions, also meaning demons, that they are walking over the power of the enemy, that nothing will hurt them, that they're seeing healing or whatever. He is redirecting them. Be thankful that you are known in heaven and keep your eye on the prize. Well, Laura, one of the overarching things of Scripture that we know that Jesus said was to remain humble. He draws near to the humble and resists the proud. And we exercise in the authority of Jesus and under the name of Jesus. All we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. And this is why. Because the authority belongs to Jesus. And I'm telling you, I'm telling myself, I'm telling the listeners, the authority of Jesus is all we need to overcome the power of the enemy. There is no power of the enemy that can stand against the authority of Jesus Christ. When we recognize that, when we speak it in the authority of Jesus, it comes to pass. All authority is in Jesus, and we operate through that authority through us, but it's his authority. So let me pick up at Matthew 28, starting at verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This reminds me of the story of Peter and John going to the temple and healing a lame man that had been lame for years. So let me pick up at Acts 3 at verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Laura, wow, what happens when we walk in the authority of Jesus through us? And I think this is a clear picture of Peter walking in the authority of Jesus. He says, silver and gold I do not have. I don't have any riches, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That was Peter exercising his authority in Jesus to have a manifestation of a miracle healing. And what does it say down here? And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Laura, what does all mean? All means all. All means all. They all saw it. They all knew he's the guy that had been at the beautiful gate for years. Well, Mike, in Acts chapter 3, it says, Then Peter said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Mike, when we look up that word name in the Greek, here's what it says about the meaning of the word name. And it means authority or character. Peter is saying in the authority and in the character of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. So Peter's acknowledging that he doesn't have anything to give the man except his authority that's been given by Jesus Christ. It's Jesus's authority in the name and in the authority of Jesus. I'm commanding you stand up and walk. Well, Laura, the other thing about this particular story in Scripture is we didn't read the part that talks about how this lame man had been lame from his mother's womb and had laid at the gate daily 
for years. This is someone lame from birth. But when you bring the authority of Jesus Christ into the picture through one of his disciples, look what it says. And immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walking and entering the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Think of the witness to that whole village, to everyone in that community. They all knew this lame person who was lame from birth, and now immediately he is up, not just walking, but leaping and praising God. That's the type of miracle-working God that we serve, and that's the type of miracle that can cause people to believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Well, Mike, this was in the temple. This man was over 40 years old. He had been carried to the temple every day to beg. And so that's really what he was doing. He was trying to beg from Peter and John as they went into the temple. But that's why Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And so, Mike, you're right. This man would have been known. And this event took place very early in the book of Acts. So Jesus has been crucified, dead, buried. He rose from the dead. He has ascended into heaven. The day of Pentecost has come in the previous chapter of Acts. The power of the Holy Spirit fell on the believers. And then we see this great miracle that this man who had been lame from birth over 40 years was healed by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we can set our expectations a little on the low side. And that's where this lame man was. He wasn't expecting a miracle of being healed and being able to walk and leap and praise God. He was just looking for a little money to get by another day or two. So we need to keep our expectations high in Jesus. He's a miracle-working God. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. We just have to believe. And we can do things with his authority through us. And this goes to all of our listeners. If you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have this authority on the inside of you, and you can use that authority to benefit God's kingdom and get through his power and for his glory. Before we close, I want to say this. Do you realize that this man was sitting at the temple gate every time that Jesus went in and went out? When he went into the temple to teach, when he went into the temple to clear it of the money changers and the people who were buying and selling, When he went in, this man was sitting at the temple gate for all of those years. But it was in the timing of God that this man was brought forth into healing by a disciple who was now an apostle of Jesus Christ. And Jesus did not do this. Peter did it with his words in the authority of of Jesus. Amen, Laura. Well, let's close with a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day of life. Each day is a gift. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for this teaching about the authority that we have that is your authority in us and can be used through us as we do that through your power and authority and for your honor and glory. Lord, I pray that the listeners that hear this message today take it into their heart that they believe that they have your authority in them and can use that to benefit your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Till next week, God bless. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this edition of Where He Leads Me with Mike and Laura Harris. To find out more, go to wherehealeadsme.org or email Mike and Laura at where he leads me info at gmail.com.